Hey, 3D Basics class, it's week two. I thought I would uh, get this lecture out a couple days early uh, to give you a little bit more time working on kind of these first basic steps with Blender. Uh, so today, we're actually we're looking at the program, we're learning the interface, we're learning all the keyboard shortcuts and just how to do some basic things. So this one's a little bit meatier and I wanted to give you a little bit extra time to like get comfortable with the program and to do your uh, first assignment. Um, so uh, hopefully you've already installed Blender um, and uh, you've at least opened it up just to verify that it works. A couple things before I actually dive in. So um, uh, first of all, I mentioned this last week, but I am doing this on Windows 10. So I have a Windows computer, I believe um, at the labs at in Brooklyn Park, they're all Macs, but I, I also believe that they have dual boot um, so you can um, start up the computer in Windows as well if you wish. Um, I also highly recommend that you have a three button mouse. So meaning you have uh, a left click and a right click and also you have a middle mouse wheel that'll click. Um, not not j just roll, but also that you can click. My second recommendation is that you have um, a keyboard with a 10 key. Meaning it has like, you know, the regular set of keys, but then it also has the, the number pad on, on the right side. Um, so if you don't have those things, it's it's totally fine. Um, today, as we're going, as I'm teaching you kind of some keyboard shortcuts and things, I'm going to do my very best to also show you alternatives to that. If you don't have a three button mouse or you don't have a number pad or um, uh, the 10 key extra set of keys on your keyboard, like if you're on a laptop or whatever. But I super duper highly recommend that um, you find these these things. So a three button mouse, with, so like left, right, and a clickable center wheel, and uh, a number pad, a keyboard with a number pad. So like if you're on a laptop and you don't have a number pad, um, you can still, I, like you can find a pretty cheap like keyboard and mouse set for less than $10 probably on Amazon or from Target or whatever to get to what you need. Um, so let's do it. All right, so over here, over in Blender. So when you open up Blender, you've got um, a splash screen here. Uh, one kind of fun fact about all of the, the splash screens in Blender is that uh, the, these are all Blender, the, the art that you see is done in Blender. And you can actually go on the Blender website and download this uh, file and actually look at it. So you can see this dude here holding a wrench like the, one of the joys of being open source is there's there's lots of um, free stuff out there for Blender. A little later in the semester when we're doing uh, character animation and character stuff, um, we'll, we're going to be actually using some free free characters from Blender itself. Um, you can see uh, we've got several options for new file. In this class, we're pretty much, or we will always be starting with general. Um, you can see that there is some 2D animation. Um, we will talk about sculpting and uh, there's VF VFX and video editing. So Blender is an extremely uh, vast tool. It does quite a few things. Um, but let's begin today by oh, starting a new general file. Okay, basic screen here. So uh, along the top, we have different workspaces. Um, layout view and modeling view are probably the, the two uh, to start with. Uh, modeling view um, is is a kind of a, a little bit simpler, but you can see there's also sculpting and UV editing, texture paint. We will cover many of these things in the semester, animation, rendering, compositing, geometry notes. Actually, we're not gonna cover geometry notes or scripting in this class, but uh, for today, we're gonna be in layout view. So uh, the majority of the screen is taken up by the viewport. The viewport, this is kind of your window into your 3D scene. Um, you can see there's actually three things. When you start a new general file, there's three things in the scene here, and you can uh, left click on them to select them. We have a cube. You can left click on this thing here. This is a camera. And uh, up here, this this little ball here is a light. So you've got a cube, a camera, and a light in the scene here. And you can, hopefully you notice that when you left click on these things, um, they become selected up here in the top right. This is your outliner. So this kind of contains, this is where anything you put into your scene, it kind of goes into a list here, all of your different objects. So these, these are objects, a light, a cube, and a camera. So to kind of change your view of this, and actually even more basic than that, so 3D stands for three dimensions. Uh, 
the uh, x dimension, the y dimension, and the z dimension. So you can see here, there's I've got a, a red line uh, in the space here. This is marking the x axis. The green line is marking the y axis. And then uh, straight up and down is the z. So I think the, the default workspace doesn't actually have a line for the z, but um, you, can, you can turn it on if you want. I can show you how to do that if you're curious. But also, uh, take a look up here. So this, um, you have a little set of axes up here to kind of help you with that. So just remember that red is x, green is y, and uh, blue is z, and z is up and down. Okay, uh, moving about the space here. So uh, first thing to do, if you have a three button mouse, um, if you click and hold, oh, and I just realized I didn't, I forgot to turn on my keyboard shortcut thing, hold on. Okay, so now hopefully, uh, now you should be able to see what I'm typing down here on the bottom right. Um, and then now you should also see my mouse click. So there's like a left click and a right click and a middle mouse click. Okay, so moving around our workspace here um, to rotate the view, uh, click and hold the middle mouse button and then you can move your mouse around. And this kind of rotates you around the workspace in three dimensions. If you hold down the shift key, and do a middle mouse click. Uh, this kind of m pans around in the world, or uh, not pans, but like just moves around in the world, lateral movement and vertical movement. And then uh, if you scroll the middle mouse wheel, this is gonna zoom in and out. So click and hold middle mouse wheel, rotate, shift, hold down the shift key, and move middle mouse wheel is move, and then scroll middle mouse wheel, zoom in and out. Alternative ways to do this. Um, so you have these buttons up here on the top right, kind of under, so first thing, to rotate, you can click and hold on these axes here and, and rotate them around like this. So that's an alternative if you don't have a three button mouse. You can also click and hold in the zoom out like this and move your mouse forwards and backwards. And then also click and hold on the hand, this hand icon, and this moves the view. So you can, you have these alternatives, you can click and hold any of these three things to move in and out. The nice thing about, um, or one of the nice things is that if you move your mouse off to the right, it's going to reappear on the left. So you can really go as far as you have desk space <laughs> for your mouse to move. Okay, now let's talk about moving objects around in your scene. So, uh, Let's select, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to uh, delete my extra things in here. So I'm going to delete the camera. So I'm going to left click so it's kind of selected in orange here. And I can hit the delete key on my keyboard. Um, that's different from the, the backspace key. So it actually is the, the, delete, the smaller delete key will remove something. So hit the delete key, delete that. So now we're just left with our cube up in our scene selection or in our uh, outliner here. So left clicking on the cube it's got this orange glow around it uh, to move something so these these are called like this is called transforming the next things that we're doing so there's uh, th three ways to transform there's to move it or grab it by using the G key with it selected you can hit G and now we can it's kind of attached to your mouse um, you only have to tap it and then it's just sort of glued to your mouse until you choose to click. You can either left click to apply this transformation, click, and now it's staying there. If you hit G again, you can move it again. And if you want to cancel this movement, you can right click. So G, left click applies, or G, right click, cancels. So G, think of G as like grab, grab it. The other way to transform something is uh, by rotating it. So R is for rotate. So if you hit the R key, you can R rotate like this. Same thing. So if you left click, it applies it or R to rotate again. If you right click, it cancels it. Third trans transformation is you can change the scale of it with the S key. S, tap S once and you can now move your mouse to make things larger and smaller. Left click to apply or S, move scale it and then right click to cancel. So you'll get very comfortable with that G to grab, R to rotate, and then S to scale. Uh, you'll notice um, 
anytime I'm, I'm doing one of these things, way down here in the bottom left, there's a, a little kind of menu that pops up. So uh, if I G to grab and move, you can see that there's a little move, this little move prompt down here. If you open this up, and actually kind of gives you the the detailed, um, I guess, measurements of what you're doing. Um, so when you twirl this open, it'll stay open. So if I G move this, um, you, it shows you how much it's moved. And you can ch adjust this precisely. So you can see uh, it's, uh, it's measuring here in meters. So by default, each of these little gray ticks is, uh, is one meter. So you can move, change the X value here on your move, or change the Y, or change the Z. Uh, you'll notice uh, over here we also have these uh, this transform thing. So th this is called the the what is it called? The properties? Yeah, the, this is the properties window. So there's a lot of tabs in here. Um, you, you can get overwhelmed and lost pretty quickly. Right now, uh, make sure you've clicked on this kind of orange square right here. This, these are kind of the, the, the basic properties of the cube. So you can see that it has a location in the x direction, and you can actually click and drag this value here to change the x. You can click and drag to change this value here. And the y, you can click and drag this value here to change the z. Uh, and so you can see like it's also got rotation, so you can click and drag on the x rotation, on the y rotation, on the z rotation here to change this. Scale x, scale y, and scale z. Uh, this is also a really easy way to kind of reset things. So you can hit, click on this and type in a value. So I can type in zero, hit enter. Actually, maybe I can just go like this. So zero and then tab to go to the next one, zero, 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 zero. And then the scale sh should be one, one, one for the scale. Oof, and we're back to normal, back to our default cube. Um, again, so like rotation here, like uh, now that I'm back to here, I can do R rotate. You can see my little rotate menu pops up and I can kind of, I can adjust this. So it's like, oh, I want it to be exactly 90. Or something like that. But here we can change this back to zero, zero, and zero. Okay, um, you'll notice you, yours probably actually didn't go away, but mine, I must have accidentally hit the, the T key. But if, if you don't have your tools along the left here, hit T to bring up your, your tools here. Um, so uh, if, if you're maybe even without a mouse or uh, prefer um, an alternative method to, to do all these things. You have these default transform uh, tools here. So there's a move tool. So if you hit that um, and, so, uh, and select your cube, you can see that now there's these handles on here. There's a blue handle to move in the Z direction. There's a red handle to move in the X direction uh, and a green handle to move in the Y direction. Uh, there's also these little squares in between. So you can see this blue one is in between the green and the red. So this will move it in both the X and Y, but not the Z. Um, you know, same thing here, same thing here. Whoops, if you can get the right angle on it. So that's, you have a move tool. Uh, it, if you hover over things, just as in pretty much any other software program, it'll, it'll give you a little tool tip here. So the sh keyboard shortcut uh, to the move tool is shift space bar G. Um, but I personally never use these because I just use the, the, the G, R, and um, S, <laughs> G, R, and S, grab, rotate, scale. Um, but you, know, you have these tools. Um, maybe sometimes you'll use uh, the, the transform tool because the transform tool combines all of these. So the, the arrows are for movement, the little hoops are for rotating, and these little squares are for scale. Um, let me reset all this. Let me go back to one, 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 uh, zero, or not one, one, one. I want zero, sorry. Location, zero, 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 rotation, and scale is one, one, one. Um, one quick note about uh, the locations. You can see it's, uh, it's at zero, 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 so that's the dead center. So like if I type in one here, it's going to move one tick in the X direction. So this, if you're if you're wanting precision, this is one way to do it. One one one. So that corner is exactly on the the origin point there. Or zero zero zero. Um, okay. Uh, now, speaking of moving in specific directions, um, w one of the reasons I use uh, the keyboard shortcuts is because you can also uh, signal the axis you want to move it on. So if I type in G, 
Um, it's just going to kind of move it based on how I'm looking at it, but if you want to restrict it to one of the axes, you can hit that letter. So if I want this to only move in the Z axis, I'm now, I'll now hit Z. You can see that now it's locked onto the, my blue Z axis here. Same thing uh, like GX. Now it's locked on the X or GY. Uh, if you want it to be... Uh, if you want to have an axis excluded from moving. So let's say I wanted to move move something on the X and Y, but not the Z. I would uh, hit G, G to grab it and then hold, uh, the, hold down my shift. You can see I have my shift hold there and shift Z. So now you can see I've got, I'm moving along my X and Y, but not the Z. So that was again, G to grab, shift Z to um, slide around. Um, same thing goes with all the other transform tools. So if I want to rotate just in the Y direction, I can just hit Y. And now I'm rotating only in the y, on the Y axis. I'm going to right click to cancel. I can RZ and I'm only rotating in the Z direction. Or I can R shift to Z and now I'm rotating in the Z. <laughs> so that one doesn't isn't quite as useful. Uh, same thing with scale. So I can go S, X, and I'm scaling just in the X. Or S, Z, and I'm scaling just in the Z. Okay. I'm going to pause here for a second. Okay, so um, let's talk about adding things into the scene now. So we have a cube. Uh, but, uh, what, you know, what else can we do with this? I'm going to go, oops, I'm clicking on my wrong window here. Uh, I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I, I prefer, it's kind of hard to see with this giant icon in the way, I prefer a selection box. Um, a keyboard shortcut to get back to your selection tool is the W key. And if you hit W several times, it'll cycle through all the different things. So I want, I like selection box. So I can select like that. Okay, anyway, just my personal preference. Uh, I'm going to set this to, back to, actually, you know, I am going to uh, G, Y, move this way over here. Now, I want to add, a, a, let's talk about primitives. So a primitive is one of the basic shapes that you can kind of start with in Blender. So uh, to add something into your scene, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, the first way is to actually go to this Add drop-down menu over here. And you can see there's a, quite a list of things. A mesh, a curve, a surface, a metaball, text, volume, crease pencil, armature, lattice, and blah, 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 blah. We're pretty much going to be working with meshes in this class. Uh, we'll do some text. We'll do some curves as well. Um, eventually, we'll get to armatures and lights and cameras. So actually, no, we're going to be doing many of the, most of these things in this class. Anyway, um, the the simpler way to add something into your scene is by the keyboard shortcut Shift A. Shift, hold down Shift, and then tap A. And uh, let's uh, look at the meshes here. So we have a plane, a cube, circle, UV sphere, icosphere, cylinder, cone, torus, grid, monkey. So let's add a monkey in here. Um, you can see uh, that now, because I had this menu open earlier, um, anytime, I, anytime you do anything, use a tool or move something, you have this, this kind of quick option menu that pops up here. Um, so anytime, same thing as anytime you add anything into your scene, there's an add blank in here. And you can change some of these properties. You can say, you know, I want my size to be a little bigger. And I actually want it to be at uh, location Y minus three, minus four, or whatever. Um, obviously, a lot of these things can be um, just changed later. Uh, but, but one thing is, it, as soon as you do something different, this add menu goes away. Um, so it becomes more important um, with certain shapes. For example, so let's go Shift A. Let's add a cylinder. Um, so here, when you add a cylinder into your scene, um, you can open up this Add Cylinder menu before you do anything else and uh, change some important uh, factors, including the, the number of vertices. So that means like how many points around or how many kind of faces there are around. So right now there's 32. You can change this to three, you know, like if, you're make, if you want it to be like a triangle. Or you can make it, you know, six or... 50. Um, you'll kind of understand what, what a good number is um, later on in the semester, but um, just kind of know that this exists. 
that uh, you can change these properties here as the second you add it into the scene. So it's like, oh yeah, I want it to be like a little like fatter like this, or I want it to be like tall and skinny because it's a pencil or something like that. Um, cap fill type, uh, you'll learn what this means, uh, uh, but uh, you can have nothing so that it's like hollow on top, or you can have an end gun or a triangle fan on top. You'll understand the difference between that, what those, the difference between those uh, later on. Oops, well, let's do triangle fan and generate UVs, okay. And so now, like, let's say, okay, like I'm good with that. Uh, I'm moving things around. Uh, I'm G rotating this and whatever, and I'm moving this. Now these, those options are gone. So uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be much trickier to kind of make this different now after you've manipulated a little bit. So just like, especially with cylinders, um, just make sure you kind of get your cylinder zoned in before you uh, start to move things around. Uh, next is Taurus. Um, this is another one that has uh, lots of settings that you want to make sure you dial in first. So, for example, major segments are kind of the uh, the number of segments going around in a circle, and minor segments are kind of the the ones kind of wrapped w around the inside of it. Um, so, just another thing to be aware of. Uh, you can also change the major radius and the minor radius. So it's like maybe it's like a, a donut, or maybe it's the the ring from Halo. All right. So the the next thing I, I want to talk about is um, orthographic views. So right now, as we're seeing, whoops, I'm clicking on the wrong window. As we're seeing our our three D world here. This, our view of this has perspective. And so things that are closer to us appear bigger and things that are further away appear larger. Um, so to duplicate something, I'm gonna duplicate this cube and I'm gonna go uh, Shift D to duplicate and then just move it right here. And then I'm going to uh, G X, nope, G Y and move it way down here. So you can see, you know, this this cube is way far away and it appears very small to us. Um, but it can be advantageous oftentimes to uh, view your scene without perspective. Um, so uh, to do that, there's a couple ways. Um, you have this button here. This, this is uh, switch current view from perspective to orthographic projections. So if, if I click this, it's now, uh, and so, and, you can also kind of use the, the grid lines as a reference, but like here the squares are huge and like way back there you can't even see them. But if you click this, they're all kind of a uniform shape and size. Um, this is this is called, this is an orthographic view. Um, but now I still like can't quite find that other cube. Oh, there it is. Um, so uh, there's there's a very handy way of several handy shortcuts to, um, to have orthographic views. So uh, on your number pad, if you have a number pad, I'll show you the alternate way in a second if you don't have a number pad, but number pad one, this is our front orthographic view and you can actually see it's, it says front orthographic view right up here. So e remember, this is the one that was super far away and now it appears to be the exact same size. This is handy. Um, three on my number pad, not the one, not the top row numbers, but three on my number pad is the side view. So let's say like I wanted to um, line this up just right like this is going to be just a little hat on top of this monkey here i'm going to rotate it a little bit like this r g to grab it r to rotate it maybe s to scale it down a little bit use my side view and then i'll just hit one of on my number pad oh and realize it's not even close but i know that um we're kind of in line here so i'm just going to gently set it on uh, the head of the monkey here just use my side view yep everything looks like it's lining up perfectly and now, if I go back to my regular view, I can see, ah, yep, really good, nice. Uh, so that's uh, one is front view, three is side view, seven is your top-down view. So maybe a reposition just a little bit. Um, to do the opposites of those, so like one is front view. If you hold down the control key for me, uh, for, Mac, for Mac, it might be the option key. You'll have to test it out, let me know. Uh, hold down the control key and then hit that same number. So the opposite of front, is back. So control number pad one is front, uh, sorry, back. Control three is left side, whereas three is the right side. 
Uh, seven is top, control seven is bottom view. Uh, I believe also like if I, I think if I hold down, if I hold down the alt key and drag my middle, yeah. If I hold down the alt key and I drag my middle mouse, I can kind of uh, manually change like this too. Uh, that's an alternate way to do it. Oh, and actually that reminds me, uh, I, f I forgot kind of another kind of shortcut. So if uh, going back to transforming just a little bit, uh, if I want to transform this cube and I do G, if you click and hold the middle mouse button here, you can select, it can snap to one of these axes as well. For some reason, I don't find this as useful, um, but some people do it like that. Uh, same thing with like um, rotate too. I think if I R, yeah, you can rotate on a specific axis uh, depending on where you drag your mouse. Okay. Uh, so that's orthographic. Um, so the the alternate uh, the alternate way to do it, obviously, is, I said the the switch like this, so that's hitting number pad five. Um, but uh, you also can go view like this and cameras. Oh no, viewpoint. Here it is. Um, so under this view menu, viewpoint, and you can select any of these here. So camera is if you have a camera in your scene, or top, like this. Uh, viewpoint bottom so yeah you can get to it if you don't have a number pad it's just a little bit slower um you can alternatively change these key bindings i'll i'll, I'll maybe show you how um towards the end viewpoint uh front whatever uh so yeah number pad five um the other thing too uh, so the the other so the other number pad, number pad one so we've covered one three five seven uh have we done nine? Oh yeah so nine is just like a 180 of wherever you are so like if i'm if I'm in a perspective view and I'm looking here and I hit nine, it's just gonna whoosh, whip around to the other side. Um, four and six are like 15 degree increments kind of rotating around. Four, six, you can kind of tap it a couple times and then eight and two are uh, 15 degree increments uh, up and down. Um, speaking of typing in numbers, I, I also uh, have forgotten another keyboard shortcut. So. Uh, with transforming as well, you can um, you can type in the number two. So like, if I want to rotate this cube forty five degrees, I can go R, and then type in the the axes. So X and forty five, and just type in the number forty five, and then hit enter, and it's a perfect forty five degree rotation. You can see it's here as well. So a lot of times I'm like RX ninety if something's facing the wrong way. So that's, that's kind of the basics of just moving things around in Blender um, and kind of navigating our workspace a little bit. Um, just a couple things to be aware of. So um, down here along the bottom, you have uh, a timeline for animation. Um, we'll get to that uh, a little later in the semester. The other thing if uh, that can cause some confusion, um, if you accidentally hit the tab button, um, it's going to change the, which mode you're in. So right now on the top left, we're in object mode. This is where you're going to want to be this week. Um, I know that uh, some of you have already had a little bit of Blender experience and you're probably like rolling your eyes a little bit that we're not doing anything in edit mode yet. Um, that'll come next week. Um, so for, for this week, uh, we're, just, we're just in object mode. So if, if you accidentally get into edit mode and you're like, trying to add new things and it's not working out and it's it's getting to be confusing uh, just make sure that you're you you can hit this drop down and go back to object mode or hit tab to go back to object mode so that we're um, uh, just manipulating the object as a whole um, you'll notice that <laughs> when I edited this now if I try to rotate this it's rotating in a giant circle so that's just a little preview of why it's a uh, warning okay uh, I'm gonna delete delete um, delete all these things in here. Um, one other thing um, that, uh, or actually no, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's talk about your um, saving a little bit. Uh, so if you go to the file menu, actually let's go to the, uh, no, let's go to file and save. Let's save this. Why do I have, what are these? Oh, okay, sorry. These are other uh, students' assignments. Let me pause real quick. So um, here is a save menu. Um, obviously, uh, it's you have a uh, Blender file, so make sure you just give it a give it a name. So this this can be called like segment one or whatever, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um, save as a Blender file. Now, the 
the one thing that I recommend you turn on, it may not be as big of a deal for this first assignment, but it's, it's definitely good to be aware of it. Go to your edit menu and go to your preferences. And uh, I want to talk to you about autosave. Uh, so let's look at save and load. So um, blend files. Uh, I encourage you to turn on autosave. So uh, let's see, what do we have it here? Save versions, uh, six save versions. And uh, th for me, so do the math here. So this saves a, an autosave every 15 minutes times six versions is an hour and a half of saving. Um, so you, you know, this kind of, this is total personal preference and it kind of depends on how much spare hard drive space you have. Cause you know, a, a blender file can be, can eventually get to be pretty large. This one's not going to be, but like you may change this to like, I want three save versions and I want it to do every five minutes. So three times five is 15 minutes. It's going to save 15 minutes of your work. Um, so let me just, just for like demonstration purposes, let me like have this on as five one. Um, so this is only going to save five minutes and every, or sorry. Yeah. It's going to save every one minute and it'll save five versions. Um, and so then uh, you'll be able to, you'll have some backups saved in case like something gets totally borked and uh, you need to go back a little bit and try to kind of start over from a fresh point. So for me, I had it set to six saves 15 minutes because I'm, I'm willing to lose up to 15 minutes of work. Um, but the, <laughs> there are times where like I may need to go back further if I haven't caught my mistake within the last 90 minutes. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Okay. Uh, let's talk about, let's talk about your first assignment and we're going to kind of, I'm going to kind of walk through uh, an example of this together. Okay, so here's here's assignment one on D2L. It is called Using Primitives. The due date is next Thursday, the 26th at 6.05 p.m. Uh, so that's just a few minutes after our next Zoom session. So the prompt is model anything using primitive shapes in Blender. Some suggestions, a vehicle, a furniture set, a house, or something totally different. Uh, this one's pretty open-ended because it's it's more about like just getting comfortable moving things around using the interface in Blender. Please include at least 10 shapes and label each of them. I'll talk about labeling in a second. You will get six points for including at least 10 primitives. Uh, obviously, you can have multiples of the same primitive. Two points uh, for labeling your shapes and five points for completing it on time and just sharing it with the class. So, um, again, I said... Uh, and how you submit this, and I should actually uh, type this in here because I didn't before. Submit your saved Blender file or .blend file to D2L. So you, for this one, you're going to give me a Blender file. Um, for future ones, you're going to give me a Blender file and you're going to render out an image of your, uh, of your scene. Uh, so this one's pretty straightforward. Um, save and close. Now, I a for many of these assignments, if not all of your assignments, I'm I am going to walk through what I might do for this. Um, you can follow along if you'd like. Um, or you can just kind of you can kind of put put me on two x speed or something and just kind of see how I do it a little bit, um, and then I want I encourage you to then do it on your own. I feel like um, okay, it's it's speech time a little bit. I think um, a lot of time online learners kind of get stuck in this tutorial mode where it's like oh I want to learn how to do this specific thing. Like, I, I want to learn how to model a train. And they and this person will go on YouTube and they say, they type in how to model a train in Blender. And without a doubt, there will probably be somebody who's made a video, a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to model a train in Blender. And they just kind of follow it. And, and they now they have a train. And it's like, wow. Uh, but this person 
just kind of it's sort of like following the instructions uh the lego instructions that come with the legos it's like yeah you made this cool thing but it's like what what can you do without the instructions um so uh I definitely, obviously, <laughs> I'll know if you are submitting exactly what we did together because we did it together. Um, so part of this class is um, I want you to watch. You can definitely follow along with Blender as we go and like pause as I go along um, and try to keep up. And then I want you to do your own thing. Um, I, I forget exactly how kind of the credit hours works. Um, with, a, with like a three credit class. So it's like you're supposed to have this many hours of lecture and this many hours of lab time so like just kind of consider how much time you're you're spending in blender and and make sure that you're kind of getting the practice that you think you need um, for some of you this is is probably going to be super duper easy especially those of you that have already done other tutorials or ha like already have blender um, so uh, th the goal here is to get everybody a baseline first and uh, don't worry like things we're going to pick up speed pretty quickly um, but we just got to make sure that everybody like has the super basic understanding before we move on because we're it's we're a team effort here I, I feel like I've lost my my train of thought oh yeah so like um, practicing um, the, you you will maybe find that my assignments the the requirements and the grading is pretty lenient um and then i'm not asking for too terribly much so um this is kind of one of those situations where it's like you're gonna you're gonna get out what you put into it um so if if you're spending a little bit more time doing this first assignment even though it's pretty simple, but it's like like maybe you're you're doing something that has thirty shapes or something like that, or or like you're really kind of trying to line things up nicely, um, or I don't know, you're just just spending a little bit more effort, like just using the software, it's it's gonna help you, because if all, the only time you're using Blender is just to get the assignment done as quickly as possible, and then two weeks later you're getting the next assignment done as quickly as possible, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna have as much time in and and um, you're gonna you you will have learned less um even since i started teaching these blender classes at hennepin tech uh, a couple years ago um i have become much faster and and i've a i've become much better at blender but also i've become better at teaching blender um just because it's it's like a time in thing it's just sort of like it's it's, it's sort of like uh practicing a sport too it's like practicing free throws like professional players still practice three throws because like you know they gotta do it every day this is my <laughs> free throw pose. Oh gosh, you guys, I'm such a dork. Okay, um, let's let's. I the example I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to make a house. So let me switch over here. Okay, um, so uh, one of the one of the challenges I'm going to delete everything on my scene here. One of the challenges uh, in being a th a creator is. Um, knowing what to start with, which of these primitives to start with. Um, and also, it also really helps to have some reference images. So what I'm even gonna do is, um, is I'm gonna pull up, uh, I'm gonna do an internet search for like a craftsman house. Um, I don't know, this one looks, this one looks like a, like a decent, let me pull this tab over here. This, this kind of looks like a house, right? This is kind of what I was going for. Um, and you know, like, doesn't yours doesn't have to be this detailed? But like, I'm I'm mine also probably is going to be this detailed. Uh, but I'm just looking for kind of some inspiration. Um, and and houses are easy because it's 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 very uh, identifiable what kind of shapes we're working with here. We're pretty much working with like cubes or like rectangles and triangles, uh, and that's about it. Maybe we'll add a few little fancy bits here and there. Um, so if I were to, and I encourage you to spend more time on me than this, uh, but if, if I were to start here, um, I'd probably start with the cube. Uh, for some applications, it may make sense to try to like do something to scale. Uh, so by default here, you know, we're working with the metric system. Um, so hopefully you have a basic understanding. Uh, if you really wanted to change your... Um, 
the scale of your stuff. Uh, it's this tab here in your properties window uh, with that has this these three little kind of icons above the, the red planet Earth. If you click on this one, this is your scene properties. You can uh, change the units if you really wanted to. So you could change it from metric to imperial and change the scale of stuff if you really wanted to. But um, side note, again, another tangent. You would want to do this if you were designing assets for a game because a lot of times uh, the scale of things is, is really important in, in game design. But here, if you're just rendering something, all that matters is what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the scale is. Anyway, okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with like um, the the foundation. So let's say, uh, so I wanted to have it kind of wide and flat. So what I could do is, uh, is I'm going to scale this out in the X and Y direction, but not the Z. So I'm going to do S for scale, but then I'm going to do Shift Z so that it only... Uh, scales in the X and Y and not the Z. So this is going to be like my house foundation a little bit. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll SZ kind of make it a little flatter too. I don't know. Just, just kind of, just kind of freeballing it here. Um, okay. So next we've got, uh, let's see, I'm gonna, let me bring this over again. So next I want to kind of do this kind of portion, or maybe I'll do like the main kind of back section of the house here. So let me move this out of the way. Uh, so let's get another cube. I'm going to go shift A and click on cube. You know, notice that everything appears right in the center here. We'll talk about this later. You can actually change how this works. Um, that's because that's where this little, you see this little red and white circle is. That's called the 3D cursor. You can move that around if you want, uh, uh, but it just, it's helpful to keep it in the center for now. Okay, so let's scale this up a little bit. Maybe I'll kind of GMO it over here. Let's scale it up even more. I'm trying to get kind of the the proportions of it right a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go set number pad seven for my top down orthographic view. So I can kind of line this up. I'm trying to look at my reference image. And I'll put it here. Uh, one thing that you might change uh, is called, there's, there's a couple of buttons up here on the top, right? There's viewport, sh uh, you can change the viewport shading with these four buttons here. Uh, render preview and material preview aren't really gonna do much for you right now because we don't have any materials or lights or anything in here, but viewport, uh, this, uh, what do they call this? Look dev or uh, solid mode, I guess. But then also wireframe. If you click this one, it'll kind of show you just the, the wire outlines of things. So things are kind of transparent. Uh, or you can go back to solid mode. The, the keyboard shortcut to change that is if you hit the, tap the Z key, Z. You can see we've got solid material preview, wireframe, rendered. Uh, so you can switch back and forth between uh, wireframe and solid if you really want to. Okay, uh, this is feeling not quite right. So I'm going to SX kind of, whoops, sorry. Right click to undo that. I'm going to SY, scale it this way a little bit, move it over here. GX, whoops, I'm getting my axes all messed up today. GX, place it there. How are we doing? I'm looking at my house. Not great. Not great. <laughs> uh, let me GZ. Or sorry, SZ. SZ. Scale it down a little bit like this. GZ, move it down. Okay, cool. Um, I kind of like the size of this one, so I'm going to Shift D, duplicate this. Shift D, duplicate, and then I'm going to uh, do Shift Z so that I'm locking this kind of in the X and Y space here. Oops, and I didn't move it. Uh, G, shift to Z, move it, move it up front here. Left click to apply. And I'm going to R Z ninety. I'm going to tap R Z and then ninety to rotate this ninety degrees in the Z direction. Um, maybe I'll do my top down view again. So this is going to be kind of like the front. Maybe I'll, maybe I am going to scale this in the uh, X a little bit. S, X, and in the Y. S Y, like that. Okay. Um, before I before we go any further, let's let's look up in our scene here, or our sorry, our uh, outliner. So we've got cube, cube, and cube. So this is where labeling uh, can definitely be handy because uh, if you're if you're looking up at the list here, or if you're trying to kind of reference a different object from one object, it's super helpful to have things labeled, just so you like very basic, so you so you know what they are. So this is part of your assignment is to have things labeled, and it can be as simple as like uh, changing this cube. If you double click on the word cube here, uh, you can type in a new thing, and so this can be like foundation. 
Um, alternatively, if you if you click on uh, a cube, you can also like rename it here. So this is in the uh, the object properties, this orange tab here. So if you click on an object, you've got the object properties here. Obviously, you've got all these transform properties you can change. You can also just type it right in here. So this is like main room, and this can be um, front room. I'm gonna double click up there. Front room. Enter. Okay, cool. Uh, so let me uh, let me get to my my top down view, and I want to I want to go uh, Z change this to wireframe, so I can really line up these this front room here. So I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna t hit the G key to try to line it up as close as I can. There's other ways to be actually precise, but we're just kind of eyeballing it today. Back to solid mode. Okay, we need some uh, we need some roof roof action, right? So let's do let's do this the like big roof over the over the front. Let's see how that how that goes. Um, so remember I showed you that cylinder trick. Let's let's make another cylinder. So I'm gonna do Shift A. Add a cylinder. Uh, and before I do anything else, so you can see uh, the the w one thing about the Add menu is it kind of remembers the the changes you made. So before you do anything, open the Add Cylinder menu. Uh, and let's change these properties again. So let's make this three. Let's make the radius much larger. Uh, and let's make the depth a little bit more regular like this. And let's rotate our X by 90 degrees. Let's see what that looks like. Aha, okay. There we go. This is looking a little bit more, more house-like. Uh, so I'm gonna hit one on my number pad to do orthographic view. Or don't forget, if you don't have the number pad, you can go view. Viewport and do like side or front or whatever. Uh, the orthographic views are really handy for lining things up. So I'm going to G kind of place this right on the top. And but I'm actually going to change the scale of this, uh, so it's going to doesn't matter anyway. So I'm going to go S Z because it's it's a little bit of a flatter roof, sort of. And it's a little bit of a larger roof too because they've got kind of a patio situation going on or like a porch situation. I'm just going to put it right there. Cool. And let me do my front view. Uh, where's it? Is that my front view? Yeah, front view one, number pad one. Oh, but actually I wanted this. No, no, no. My house is totally sideways. Okay. Side view, turns out, is what I needed. Uh, so I'm just going to G, just kind of reposition this. I'm going to hit Y so that I just slide right along there. And then I'm going to S, whoops, S, Y to scale in the Y direction like this because they had kind of an overhang. I don't know. G, Y, moving it like this. Cool. Wow. You guys, this looks terrible. <laughs> but it's not about that. It's not about looking good. It's just about practicing moving things around. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at looking at my looking at my house here. Let's see. What else do we have? Um, so we've got, you know what? This this whoops. Oh, I'm clicking on the wrong window again. This looks like it's it's a little bigger over here. So I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna S Y scale. Whoops, not delete. S Y. A little bit like this. Okay. Okay. GY. I'm going to move this over here a little bit. We're just kind of starting off. All right. Let's add this. So there's there's this like room. There's this room here. Let's add that. Let's add that room on the top. Cylinder. This is like main roof. Don't forget to label things. Main roof. roof. Okay. Let's add a new cube. Shift A. Mesh. Cube. I'm just going to GZ, move it up here, S, scale this up. GZ, move it down a little bit. Move it back here like this. Eh, it's got to be a little wider. S, Y, scale it wider like this. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just learning. Um, rather than like do the... Uh, do the cube dance again, or sorry, the cylinder dance again to with another roof line. I'm just going to shift D, duplicate this. And let's go RZ90, enter. And I'm going to scale this in which direction? The S direct, the X direction. <laughs> oh, it's so silly. It's looking silly. GZ. Mm, it's got to be a little larger. 
you know, I think my problem is like this, this had to be a lot bigger. I need this to be much bigger like this so that things can kind of stick out of it. And I need my house to be bigger. I need this to be much larger. S, shift, Z, move this. Yeah, we're just making it all bigger. Yeah, don't be afraid to like mess up and start over. Uh, if you want to select multiple things, uh, you can click on one thing and then hold down the shift key and click on another thing. So I clicked on both the cube and main roof one, and so now I can kind of move these independent of each other. I'm not an architecture. S, Z, let's make this a little taller, and then G, Z, move it down a little bit. Uh, one thing you can do, instead of uh, like having a, a, a foundation like this, I'm just going to delete my foundation because I hate it. Shift A, I'm going to add a mesh, and I'm going to add a plane. And a plane is just like a totally flat one one sided polygon. And I'm gonna hit S and just scale this way up. And I'm gonna call this plane ground. So rather than having a foundation, I'm just gonna have ground. Okay, making sure I'm labeling things. This cube is like upstairs. Upstairs room. Uh this is upper roof. There we go. I'm remembering to label things. I'm gonna make this a little larger here. Let's see, and this is a little bit more off to the side, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna do my side view here, and I wanna make sure that this roof is kind of lined up with this room here, because it's it was looking a little off-center. One thing you could do is to make sure it's perfectly lined up is you could look at the, uh, the Y value of this. Let's say uh, it's like, we can round that up to 1.8. You can make this Y value 1.8 as well, 1.8, just to make sure that they're, they're totally in sync. Yeah. How's this looking? Terrible. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, let's make another roof. I'm gonna shift D, duplicate this, move it down here, scale this up. I'm working a little faster now. Okay, it's starting to look kind of housey. Maybe I uh, S Y kind of scale this in a little bit. G, just kind of adjust it like this. Okay. Cool. Uh, why don't I? Why don't I? Uh, S X, scale this a little bit just so it kind of goes into the roof maybe a little more. I don't know. What else can we do? Uh, in my house, there's there's like a chimney. So let's throw a chimney in here. So let's shift A. Let's add another cube. Let's just kind of move it over here. G to move it over here. It's going to kind of get it in place. So I'm, I'm kind of rotating. I'm holding down my middle mouse button to kind of rotate around. Uh, and kind of just sort of get into place. I suppose I could use an orthographic view. Hit 7 to kind of put it right where I want it to be, maybe here. And then I'm going to scale it in the Z direction to kind of stretch it out. So S, Z. Nice big chimney. So how I'm doing this right now is uh, I'm having things overlap quite a bit. So you can see, like, you know, if I go into a wireframe here, you can see, you know, the roof, this roof's going into that roof, and the, this building's going into here, and some of the things are actually going under the ground. Um, that's not a big deal. So that when things kind of intersect, that's called clipping. For, the, for these purposes of just, like, understanding how to move things around, not a concern at all. In fact, that's probably the only way that you're going to achieve some of the effects that you want. Like, if you're going to make a car... You know, you're going to be combining cubes and things. I would say buildings are, are probably pretty easy for you to, for this particular assignment. I wonder what, uh, you know, an architect student would think of this roof line right here. Very nice. Here's another shortcut. Uh, if, if you are, like, uh, if you want to focus on something and you're having trouble, like, kind of getting to it, uh, if you... If you want to focus on an object, uh, it's the, the period, number pad, period key. That'll kind of zoom in on whatever you have selected. So like if you're lost too, you're like, I'm upside down. I don't know where I am. All I want is to look at upper roof 001. So you can select it from your outliner here and hit the uh, period key on the number. Oops. And, and your mouse has to be in the, the viewport window. You'll kind of learn, you, you'll learn this about some things, but some keystrokes only work if your window, if your cursor is in the appropriate window, usually the, the viewport here. So my mouse is now in the viewport and I can hit period key. Oops, and I, I'm still upside down, I guess. But the other, the other uh, keyboard shortcut too is um, if you hit uh, 
I believe it's, is it shift Z? Nope, not shift Z. Is it, um, what is it? Now I'm forgetting. Whoops, don't delete. Oh, shift C, sorry. Um, sh if, if you're like in kind of a funky place, if you hit shift C, it's going to zoom you out to be able to see everything. So it kind of shows you everything that's in your scene. Shift C. Uh, what else could we add? You know, you can you can get fancy with this. So like maybe you uh, shift D duplicate this and go Z, oops, and G to grab Z to move it up. And maybe we'll scale this out a little bit. And then I'll go S Z to kind of shrink this down. So you can have a little fancy top, G Z to move it up. A little fancy top to your chimney. Maybe you want to add a front door if you want to get fancy too. So we can go like shift A, let's add a cube. So it's also like just you're thinking about what the shapes of things are. So G kind of move, whoops. Let me go to my top down view. It's handy because you can kind of see through things here. Get that into place. Oh, that's not the right place. I'm gonna go back to my top down view and maybe we'll switch to a wireframe here so I can get it lined up with the front of the house. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go back to outline. Oh, and where did, where did my properties window go? Something happened I didn't even notice. Um, I can go back to this previous layout here. Well, I must have actually accidentally done full screen or something. Um, so let's let's just make a little front door here. Maybe I'll do my side view here to get a nice little orthographic view. Maybe I'll scale it up like this, and then I'll go SZ to kind of scale like this. That's about the size of a door. And then, you know, I could SX scale it down like this. Or I can just GX, grab it and move it into the house a little bit. There's a front door. You could do a mailbox too. So maybe just take the chimney, shift D to duplicate the chimney, put it out here, scale it down, then it becomes a little mailbox post. Whoops. Uh, scale it down a little bit more, GZ, put it down into the ground, just so it intersects with the ground. And then you can have a mailbox, shift A. Let's have a monkey mailbox. I don't know the story about why uh, it's called Suzanne. Let me just get my top down orthographic view to line it up here. And then we can go R, Z, and then type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees in the Z axis. And there's our, oh, it's got to be smaller. It's too big. There's a mailbox for our house. So, you know, that I spent 20 minutes-ish on that. Um, you can spend more time. I encourage you to spend more time. Try doing a few different things. So I'm, I'm, I'm already uh, delinquent here. So, uh, so this is, let's see, I got, whoops, I'm click on the wrong window. Again, uh, so this is upper roof that we can call this lower roof. Don't forget to label things. You're getting points for labeling things. Cube, uh, this is like chimney, and you can just call this, you can also just call this chimney, chimney top. Chim top, it, you abbreviate too. This is a uh, door. This is mail post, mailbox post. So let's see, how many did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I did it. Uh, so again, like if you only wanted to spend time on the 20 minutes on this, fine. Um, as long as you're feeling confident in your ability to kind of move things around, understanding the different axes, understanding the different primitives, uh, understanding that you have this add menu that appears here that you can open up whenever you add things, uh, and that you know how to add things, the add menu, how to navigate around, you know, using your middle mouse button, holding down shift in your middle mouse button, middle mouse wheel. Also, I think if you do control, control and middle mouse wheel, that zooms in and out. Understanding your different orthographic views, so front, side, top, uh, back, left, bottom. Understanding your different transform tools, 
So you've got moving, rotating, scaling. Also being able to change the values of things over here. How to label stuff. Because next week we're going to build right off of that. Um, let's see. Um, oh yeah, and actually, so you don't forget to save. You will submit your Blender file to D2L. Uh, since we've been at it for a while, um, let me let me show you about the autosave thing now. So if uh, I had autosave on, if I go to File and Open, uh, yes, Save Changes. So you can see I have um, my assignment one dot blend here. Um, but it's not showing any of my autosaves. So uh, you can go to these filter settings here, hit this drop down, and also check backup files. And uh, so we have uh, blend 01. So actually, for some reason, it only has one autosave. So I should maybe double check my settings. But um, if you need to restore a backup, that's how you do it. So you just load, um, or sorry, not blend 01, it's blend 1. But if you have multiple uh, autosave, backup saves, it it's like blend 1, blend 2, blend 3, blend 4. Um, and that's how, and then you can open. Oh, it's underneath my head here. Oops, well, not that. And then you can open it down here. Uh, yeah. So it's it's been one hour and one minute. So to re reiterate several points that I made, your goal to, uh, with this first assignment is to get comfortable moving things around, using primitives, navigating the workspace. Uh, don't kill yourself over this or making it look good because it doesn't matter how good it looks. Um, you will submit this before class on, or sorry, before we Zoom next Thursday, the 26th at 6 p.m. Um, we'll just look at them together and it'll just be fun and quick and, and like no pressure, please. Um, if you are having doubts or concerns or questions, uh, email me and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I can set up a individual Zoom with you if you wish. Um, but yeah, so I just, I, you can get a head start. Obviously, I'm posting this before Thursday, so you've got a little bit extra time to do that first thing. Um, but this this first assignment is is for next week. Anyway, I think I've uh, I think I've rambled enough, and I'm sure I've forgotten a thing or two. Uh, but I look forward to seeing what you have, and uh, we'll I'll see you in the next one next week. So long.